morning everybody or in other terms happy subah to everybody first of all thank you so much for coming uh, this is the, this is the third episode of voice of silence for those of you who are new i would like to uh, introduce what Vo- voice of silence basically means it is if you can uh, you know directly relate it with your own lives there are times when we've all suffered and we all choose to suffer in silence reason being uh we are scared of being judged by the society and i've always maintained this that when you don't share your pain and you suffer in silence in the fear of being judged the suffering kind of doubles it magnifies so not only are you scared of judgment and then you're suffering on your own and then it kind of creates quite the chaos in the head that was the reason why voice of silence was initiated as a cause because well all of us including myself have gone through our bits of suffering and will continue to so uh thank you once again for coming here and a little example let's say before we even move on to our, our third speaker let's say we are all suffering somebody is suffering from something and that person then decides to tell a stranger to tell a stranger that mere sath ye ye ho raha hai mere ko tab aisa feel hua tha maybe not around that time maybe later that you know this is what i felt and the other person listens and in a very unbiased way just listens okay because there are new there are new circumstances not everybody is going to go through the same sufferings in life right i think that is the lack of communication and the lack of talking is what leads other people to maybe get to unintentional or intentional insensitivity and intolerance i am speaking from a point of view of pers- of a person who may have in in my life been insensitive just because i did not know i did not know how to talk right hota hai bahut baar hota hai aapko pata hi nahi hai kya bolna hai to aise comes across as insensitive what i'm leading to is that with voice of silence and with the volunteers who are brave enough to come here and share their stories what the intention of voice of silence is to communicate to the world that this also happens this is also a suffering this is how maybe you could react to my suffering please give me an open space to open up so that insensitivity and intolerance from the world start to reduce a little and that's where we make the change so with that allow me to introduce my third speaker mamta badin she is a surviving wife she lost her husband to covid last year uh she is a very senior uh, corporate communications professional at an mnc and um, i can't thank you enough she's come all the way from indirapuram she's joining us from there and at the same time i would like to thank subha that's a community on facebook which was initiated by three extraordinary women i know two of them personally one of them is right here with us her name is chandana agarwal there's yoshita and there is sarita the three ladies they began this beautiful initiative called subha which kind of lends their support to Uh, all the women that have lost their spouses and instead of using the usual word that is used for uh, these kind of situations they have a very beautiful word called brave hearts so mamta is a brave heart and she is here to share her story so please thank you mamta before i begin on your story is there anything that you would like to tell the world maybe in a in a line before we begin any message that you would like to relay Yeah so the first thing is uh, Kanika thank you very much for giving me this opportunity so I'm so very happy that I'm able to you know share my thoughts and also thoughts and views of so many more brave hearts uh, who are not here today uh, okay uh, as uh, for the message uh, the message that I want to give to the world and to the people is don't judge others because you don't know their story and also you have not lived their life so please don't judge others um the other thing that i would uh, want to say is that be in the present um always be thankful for what you have because nothing's gonna stay forever don't take anything for granted what you have is now and that's why it is called present which means a gift so just you know cherish that thank you thank you that that really means a lot I hope that got registered, and if it did not, then I'm going to repeat it and keep repeating it throughout the show. So before we begin, we we'll need to know who she is, who is Sanjay, and well, it is quite the 
it's a very nice interesting story so they met about 30 years ago and uh, typical bollywood indian story where uh, sanjay uh, so intercaste into religion you know christian sanjay sanjay belong to a christian background and she is uh, from orissa and a hindu brahmin so inter religion inter caste all of that thankfully there was a lot of support also from both sides of the family yes a lot of resistance but a lot of support as well then they started but they started on their own both of them and there was this one sentence you had told me uh, mamta that sanjay had told you right before shadi what was that would you like to share that will tell you how what kind of man sanjay was yeah so uh, let me just you know uh, give you a little glimpse of sanjay here so um sanjay was a very charismatic uh, guy he had the gift of the gab he could really he was a charmer and he was like you know uh, he could just attract anyone whether it is his a- uh, age group or people younger or people older he was uh, an incredible you know uh, friend so anyone who knows him even for you know two minutes will not forget him ever he was that kind of personality absolutely charismatic and with all those things he was also humane he had a very high level of you know uh, humility he was generous he was kind so i don't know i don't have i have so many things for him but yes and that line uh, yeah and that line is you know when we were just you know about to uh, i mean our courtship was just you know going on and when we really decided that we want to get married uh, so that time sanjay had just you know come back from the us after the stint and he had started something on his own and he uh, that thing was not you know after some time it wasn't doing so well and he was thinking of wrapping it up at that time and then when we we decided that you know we want to get married then uh, sanjay said hey girl think about it again because i have nothing much to offer you except myself because i really i'm not you know uh, you know so established at the moment so that that's takes, what he said <laughs> that takes you know it's a stand up human being a man who's you know i mean it's so easy are pyar ho gaya shaadi kar lete hain but the person still uh, telling the person he's fallen in love with that look this is what it is and you can still step back if you want to that choice was given so this kind of gives us a glimpse into the person that sanjay was and naturally i mean you can imagine how the story unfolded later but well they built their life together uh they had their son after 5 years of yeah uh, we planned marriage. that so that you know yeah. we wanted to give him the best so yeah. that's how we planned yeah. Yeah. he's 23 today he's 23 and um, well they built a life together they built a good life together uh they became financially uh, well off they worked hard a good life like we can all say and uh, well then as we all know last year covid hit we are going to move past this bit i will not get into the details but we all have experienced uh, the second wave of covid personally in mamta's case uh, i mean it was tough it was a month of an ordeal which she and her son kind of went through in a hospital and sanjay was hospitalized they did whatever whatever they could to save him but i guess it couldn't be done and that's when last year in uh, in june is when we lost uh, sanjay and i'm not going to let's not talk about uh, the entire ordeal there but here's where the real crux of why we are here today begins so mamta let's begin from that point if you're comfortable uh, at that point when you when the news came to you and maybe it was a week into it i i know you told me that you went to the cemetery and uh, you know you buried uh, him and your son had said some beautiful things while all that was going on let's first talk about first how you were feeling i know it's obvious i know uh, people can think that obvious hai but yahi to problem hai obvious nahi hai tabhi to insensitivity hai please tell us wherever you're comfortable whatever you want to share how were you feeling how did life unfold and then we move on to the next few things okay. whatever you're comfortable with Please. so uh so little little bit of you know what happened uh, during that one month 
so of course you know uh, you all know it was mayhem in uh, delhi that time and uh, everything were in short supplies there were no hospitals um we all felt sick i mean one after other and you know um, i was sick uh, my son was sick and we all got medicines through the online doctors and our own doctor and everything we 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 got all right also and so did sanjay and suddenly that you know the whole thing just came back he started coughing and stuff like that and uh, that's when we said that okay we need to you know uh, take him to a um, hospital although he was so much against hospital and it was like something that he knew he said don't take me to hospital because if i go there i won't come back i said i mean don't be crazy you have to go to hospital otherwise you will not get all right so we did all of that and uh, i would hear you know just uh, specifically you know talk about um, my friends and especially uh, sanjay's you know classmates and also you know my family who most of them are not here they are not in india but the kind of support uh, they provided to fetch the hospital and also uh, being in the hospital um, you know giving him uh, you know um, through uh, very you know uh, through these government officials um, who are you know highly placed they were checking in for him all the time that how is this patient doing so he was giving all given all the importance all the good treatment so and everything so all support was there from yeah. our family friends yeah and okay. i mean i'm very thankful for yeah. all of that yeah i'm sure but uh, uh, we did everything and uh, it it just didn't work um one thing i would like to highlight here even you know uh, before going to what happened later and the kind of insensitivity is you know the insensitive sensitivity actually started right from that period okay, okay. so um, i don't know if uh, we have doctors here but uh, it is nothing to you know talk about uh, the community as such but i'm just talking about my own experience so the first time when i went there you know it was all negative negative and negative feeling that was you know shown to me um, by the doctors i mean they said uh, after checking him up after doing his hrct and all that they said uh, the doctor with very you know with a poker face she comes and she says 50 50 i said what are you trying to say and she said don't you understand uh, the rate of mortality um, uh, through covid so he's got 50% chances of survival okay to my face it just bang came like this i said okay fine and i said who cares i mean 50% is there with me the positive side but then it just you know went on every day i would go there and the doctor one day she said why are you wasting your time coming here every day from morning till evening why don't you just get back to your work because we are there and secondly you are we are, uh, you are not even allowed to you know come inside and somehow i was i was you know sneaking in somehow i could manage but doctors didn't know that this and was uh, where was this hospital it was close to your home or was no, it no i mean we got it through you know some some pull push and all that and uh, it was in faridabad and uh, and you were coming from indirapuram yeah, to delhi yes. you were coming yes your son also, son also uh, my son you know actually i asked him not to come because um, it was his exams time and secondly when i'm already getting exposed to covid i didn't want yeah, him to yeah. uh, get exposed so mm-hmm. i was you know trying to take the brunt and i i thought that when it's needed he will come but i was trying to you know just protect him so you were time. alone basically i was i was way. alone no uh, relatives no friends could come although yeah, you know yeah. i was on phone calls the whole day but no one could come at that time so i mean physically i was just by myself and then this doctor one day says that i told you yesterday also why are you spending so much time in the hospital and uh, i i shouldn't be saying that but i hope you can you know uh, make out you're so young i don't want to say that i mean she in a way she said that he's mm. not going to make it so go do something something else you're and so young you're so young okay and uh, i don't want to say that to your face but i hope you understand yeah that's a little personal see the doctors bit i still understand like if we want to look at the other side that time i think uh, we all have heard about hospitals and doctors being overworked so there may be but let's say i can't even imagine what it is being in your place but i can imagine what you must have felt with doctors telling you 50 50 and all of that it can really hurt but this sounds like a personal comment uh you're so young that that's a little personal 
still i think let's if we can move past the hospital just giving giving them benefit of doubt in terms of maybe they were overworked and you know so much of chaos was happening let's move on from this point on to post yeah where it has been established there is no i mean there is no room left for any doubt and you are grieving you're grieving that first let's begin with the support that you got what were the sources of support for how long that's where we start okay so i would say that i have been really very very lucky to get you know all the support um starting from my family first i would start with my son i mean my son is uh, we have just one child and he's been so pampered and he's actually not seen hardship ever whether it's financially or otherwise i mean he gets his way through and he's very very pampered so he never he never actually you know um, had to go any of these things and this such a big thing just hit him yeah. and he suddenly he matured uh, in yeah. a uh, overnight i would say and he was just standing by my side like a rock all the time and he started feeling about for me and he was hiding his feelings so that you know i don't feel bad right then i would you know say my mother she has been there with me uh, for more than one year now she's still with me she's left everything i mean she's also single uh, but she's left everything her house and everything and she's there with me so i don't know without her what i would have done then i have most of my you know um, you know, from sanjay's side from my side you know uh, not living here in india but i have uh my sister and brother in law staying here in gurgaon itself and they have been there like you know the immediate support i mean i have been i've gone i went and stayed in their house for a month or so and uh, in the beginning then sanjay's classmates i mean those those friends are you know uh, they, they are also my very good friends and i also you know went and stayed uh, in you know their, their house over the weekends i would go and couple of friends i stayed over and they all just you know poured with poured me with so much love that i can't even you know say that uh, i can't emphasize uh, enough on that and moreover um, i also you know have you know sanjay's family who was you know supporting supported? me yeah who supported full support I, came from the inbox uh, i don't have my in-laws um, i mean they are no more okay. uh, but uh, they were very very loving to me and sanjay's elder brother who lives in australia he he checks in on me uh, all the time the kids do that okay. um and uh, then uh, he's got a few of the cousins and all um, again not in india but they all helped me during the hospital time and even later so i think i was very very lucky to get very good support from everywhere my sister is in london and she was checking on me i think every day twice a day kind of thing okay so i think um, from support wise uh, i would say i was um, really lucky uh, the other thing i mean i would say the biggest support that came to me uh, was from uh, this grief support group that, that i'm part of it is subha and um, today um, we also have with us um, uh, the admin of the one of the admins of the group uh, channa here and we have so many um, you know brave hearts who are uh, part of uh, of that group and they're supporting me here today so that would that i would say you know one side i had so much support but when i just weigh the both you know the grief support group and all other support i think this still weighs um, little more uh, than everything else because there you know i by, I, by this you mean the the subha group the subha group. group i mean yeah it weighs yes. more much more in terms of support support yeah please talk about it. yeah so i mean this is a group when i reached here first when this thing hit me i was like you know oh my god such a thing has happened to me and i was thinking it's only me and i knew that there are more people but of course i was not exposed to them so i didn't know much i couldn't you know say much but once i reached here i said oh my god they are all my type and i was in a way you know i felt that okay this is a place where i could express myself i could you know talk about my feelings openly without being judged and uh, then the group not only you know um, we had uh, you know support for each other but also you know uh, the um, the admins and the founders they made sure that um, we would get all the support like i had a buddy to myself who okay. i would just go and talk to i mean she was not she's not an expert on any field but it's just I somebody just listening. someone listening to that's me that's all yeah that's, that's someone it. 
so that's such a beautiful without thing without giving you yeah. solutions or yes comments or listening. statements yeah not you know giving me any opinion at this point mamta i would like to ask you and please be absolutely frank with me uh, when you found the support group and uh, well like minded uh, prebhats I, i don't know like minded but who've gone through a similar experience um it's very important because that's exactly what i'm trying to promote here is that you found like uh, uh, people from similar backgrounds see grief is grief nobody can say grief mera kam ho gaya that's that's everybody's personal journey but did something lessen something did something go down anything like what happened then what was was there any relief was there a feeling of i'm not alone like what were the positive feelings that came the moment you saw that you're not alone what were those things yeah so the whole thing of you know beating yourself up that why me and uh, i'm the did only one did yes, you do why of me? course yeah. yeah why me was uh, and even after subha i did that but when i saw so many of uh, them then you feel that okay we can share each other's feelings and grief the grief didn't you know lessen but the only thing is that you know you have a community you have a group out there and you you belong somewhere because mm-hmm. i suddenly started yeah. feeling that you don't belong nowhere yeah, alone you you are not part of anything yeah. neither you are not a couple you are just a new single and you are adjusting to the new environment and you don't know which side where you have to go but this this place felt like home okay i can call this mine so that's what it is i think the word uh, belong that she's used i think as human beings that is i think one of in fact i think that's the foundation of everything every human we want to belong you know and it's when right from the childhood you want to belong to a peer group when you don't belong is when the feelings of jealousy hatred all those come in but as a grown up i want to belong i mean let's all be very honest with ourselves we always want to belong now of course what we want to belong is our own personal choice but i can't start to fathom how you must have felt and at the same time i can't fathom what you must have felt when you found people where you could belong my point here now this is a person who's a speaker but this is the first point where i would like to say that through voice of silence what we are trying now here is that why should the belongingness be exclusive to a group started by wonderful people but why should that be a group that okay this is a community of brave, brave hearts why why is that exclusive why is the whole society not giving everybody a feeling of belongingness why should somebody who is suffering with grief or for whatever reason yeah grief comes in all sorts of ways but imagine a person feeling so lonely and alone that agar subah nahi hota to aapko to abhi bhi बिलोंगिंगनेस का फीलिंग नहीं आ रहा होता ना मैं तो आपसे मिलती नहीं ये होता नहीं सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल चांदना थैंक यू कान थैंक यू इनफ नो नो सीरियसली बट नो वो वो केम अप विद द आईडिया यार क्रेडिट नीड्स टू बी गिवन अग्रीड स्टिल स्टिल ग्रैटिट्यूड एंड आई वुंट हैव मेट हर वी वुंट बी एबल टू डू ऑल दिस बट आई थिंक एज एवरीबॉडी एल्स दैट इज प्रेजेंट हियर आई थिंक दैट इज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट दैट वी वुड लाइक टू मेक that from today i know i will um not let anybody feel alone or lonely and especially when they are suffering i think that's the worst that's the worst so that's point number 1 please carry mm-hmm. on from here carry on yeah so what we talking we were about? talking about the positive and we can now move to the not so positive comments that came yeah. i have them written down but please yeah. you can Stop. so i mean there have been many such you know um, comments which came my way maybe my uh, as i said that i've got such a you know lovely group of uh, i'm surrounded by such nice people like for my friends my family my office guys i mean they have they have given me so much support during hospital days later that i feel really you know uh, blessed but i mean even i have all these things even though i have all the support still you know um, some kind of insensitivity you do you know encounter and it's not that people always mean ill they are trying to be nice to you but they don't know how to say how to phrase because they have not been taught that okay so and nobody none of us i mean our education system especially in india here you know this is this is not part of the curriculum you don't know you are not taught how to deal with your grief 
or even to support a person yeah. who's grieving so it's not it's not anybody's fault okay but yes now that you know uh, we have a platform and such a thing such things are happening it would be nice for people to know that you know what these insensitivities are per se first of all you know i would say that you know when such a thing happens you are still you know you you're carrying a wound inside but you're showing up every day and if you don't know my story you would think i'm a normal person and i'm trying to compete with and why i'm using this term normal person because something has happened to me which makes me wounded so i'm i'm little little less than normal okay and you know i disagree but please go ahead. <laughs> i mean it's your uh, yeah yeah it's so so i mean i i would say that i'm trying to you know compete and try try to trying to be at the same space same level as everybody else they say that when you are happy things just move but when you are not happy you have to still make things move and that's what i'm trying to do at the same level at par whether it's work work i mean okay fine colleagues are very very supportive everything is there but you still have to you know perform you still have to deliver there's nothing like nobody gives you discount you still have to use your brain and do that and i've been doing that after a very short gap actually but i i get a lot of support so <clears throat> few of the things that i encountered and first i will start with couple of you know um, incidents which happened for example i met her you know uh, at a at a friend's place i met a friend of hers who also it seems um, had um, the same thing where her husband was uh, you know um, down with covid but of course he made it okay and she was like you know oh so sorry to hear about this did you do this you know what i did after you know i heard about this person's uh, sickness first thing i did was i started giving some xyz medicine i just immediately you know uh, stopped you know uh, going to work and i just you know uh, dedicated myself to uh, you know uh, his well being okay you this, um, did she know about your story after she knew i mean after it was, she, she knew, knew. I just, you just mentioned to her this is what happened yeah, with me I, i just met her somewhere it, she is a friend's friend okay not my friend so i mean when she she was trying to tell me i said are you trying to you know comfort me or i mean when you are drowning you don't want lessons of swimming that time you want a life coach who will pull you up right you, you don't want that's those lessons well. at that time that that's very this well. is how you very, swim very 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 well that analogy is put really well yeah yes. so i mean uh, i was already going through survivors uh, guilt and uh, i always blamed what kind of guilt Why i blame myself uh, and later you know um, after joining subha i realized that i'm not the only one going through this guilt so that also it's, gave me it's comfort a it's, it's a common thing it's a common thing it's 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 the process of grieving it's one of the you know things that you feel okay. and i was under tremendous guilt that you know i wish i had taken him to hospital before i wish i had you know changed the course of medicine i wish and then sometimes i felt that i wish i had never taken him to a hospital because he never wanted to be in the hospital he was pleading he was saying mamta just take me out and i'll be fine when you are on niv you are being put on your on ventilator very soon and uh, how would i you know manage and you know ambulance and, and ensure that he is you know reached home safe and then i have that environment it was not possible i do feel that i wish i had listened to him and just somehow you know be courageous and done that so lots of things and there are a lot of brave hearts they all are going through the survival so skill gets cool. but don't add to it don't rub it in that i did this that's why okay you are lucky your husband survived and you are lucky and it's a good thing but it didn't happen with me so don't rub it in please i'm so sorry yeah but that happened so that is a <coughs> i wonder where she was coming from though but uh, again the point is really not about uh, here would like to give benefit of doubt to the other party but then that's not what this is about what this is about is the person who's gone through something and um, what others see whatever she meant i don't know whether that is good intent malice bad intent but here we are here to educate ourselves that maybe there's a person in front of us okay i'll ask you this mamta let's say i'm that person you know who's being uh, that okay did you do this did you do that and adding on to your survivor's guilt what would you tell me what should i have said instead this is what we are here to learn so i mean i think that was not the occasion or time to you know talk about how 
uh, how amicably you you know um, could manage your you know uh, things how well aware and well informed you were about uh, the things and the situation to act quickly that was not the time because for me you know sanjay had already gone so i think that was the time when you could have just simply said that uh, mamta i'm so sorry to hear this and so many people have you know uh, have faced this and i'm sure you did your uh, best so that's so that's a learning that's number one that when somebody is going through it don't let's not rub our luck or time to sabka aane wala hai but the point is let's not rub it in on somebody you know and maybe just say i know everybody has a way of consoling that i'm sure you would have understood when somebody is actually trying to console even if they are not using the right words mm -hmm. but this is something i think we can all take away number one that maybe just keep quiet maybe just hold her hand or maybe hug you if they are close enough and that should be enough yeah. okay what I else mean, you should put me at the line right? at the it's about me yes. it's not it's about, not about, you about at how that time. i manage so well yeah. yeah that can be spoken about later or maybe like you said time and place time and place any other comments yeah. uh, then the other thing you know immediately i found was you know um, in my condo um, there is this person and i'm sure when he sees the video he will know that it's about him i don't want to take his name so you know in the garb of you know trying to uh, make me feel that you know um, make me feel positive or in the garb of you know trying to heal me he just started getting very familiar okay and um, he would say that you know um, i mean i got a got a phone call later late in the night and why would anyone call me of course i didn't never answered the call next day in the morning when i saw him down he was like um, I have to talk to you. I said yes, please go on. And um, he said no. I have to come to your house to talk to you. I said why my house? I keep, I said I keep very busy. So please, I mean I cannot give you any time. And then next thing I see is little later in the day that you know uh, someone rings the bell and he's there. Okay, just wants to talk to me. Of course, you know I managed it my way and um, it was all fine. But what I'm trying to say is you know. Uh, that time i felt that had they uh, had sanjay been there would anyone have okay. tried their luck or tried to be you know so familiar at that point in time i mean maybe everything was his intention was also fine but somehow i didn't like it and then he kept saying that if you i'm going to you know promise you that you will be fine in one month i said okay but i was also ignoring in my mind okay let him he's trying to be nice it's fine but then he said why don't you remove uh, you know uh, this you know couple picture of yours from whatsapp i said how does it bother you okay <laughs> why so i mean these kind of things so that that is another part of it like you know people trying to get familiar and this very sidey people and that's the time you want to just look at god and say hey god can you keep these monkeys in the zoo somewhere i mean <laughs> so that must have been tough no so you are dealing with your grief you are dealing with guilt you are dealing with the lady who mentioned that other thing which she did and then there is this new set of yes uh, yes again whoever is listening and people here mat karo yaar please mat karo yaar thoda time de do i mean this is just still it's insane anything what yeah. there was this one pota puti wala yaar uh, you have to think huh. about so i mean that maybe two more things that i would say please yeah i just remember a couple it. of more yes, things please. yeah yes please all of so them so then there is a friend of mine and a good friend and um, again you know please you know when i say something keep in the background that they all mean well they're trying to be nice to me except for this uh, the sidey persons you know a remark that i said because he was not trying to be good he was just trying yeah, to yeah. you know that's try evident. his luck that's evident. and he got a very good straight message okay uh so this one says that oh my god mamta and she she knew about uh, sanjay's thing through from hospital days and she was checking on me all the time and she said i know what you would be going through even even for 5 seconds if i have to think like this for myself i would die that's what she said and i said that that means you are trying to tell me that i should have been dead long time back maybe taken rebirth also somewhere <laughs> because i mean long time sometimes i said that to her i didn't say i just thought, thought 
because i knew that you know she doesn't mean that but she doesn't know how to express okay she said even for 5 seconds i cannot think like this and then there's another friend who said oh my god pamta and we were we we were known as you know very you know cool couple very you know happy go lucky couple kind of thing so, oh my god mamta at every level you will you know think of him and little little things that you were doing together and uh, i know how you would be feeling okay i know how you would be feeling you don't have to narrate the whole thing i have my own memories and i do feel oh, so she was reminding you of the like how i will you know miss those little things that we did together so i was mm-hmm. like okay good and um, yeah this is another one and then one thing i was like you know again i would you know just forgive that person for being so ignorant so i just met her on the way uh, while walking and she was just an acquaintance and she said and one could make out by my face that i would have cried a lot and then you know come down and my eyes were swollen and everything so she would say no you have to handle yourself mamta now you have to live for your you know uh, children apne bachcho ke liye jeena hai apne pota poti ke liye jeena hai really what the heck i mean i i just you know dismissed her thought uh, in my mind uh, thinking that she's so naive um, because you know the loss that i went through is so big that i find all i found all these things very very petty actually and there is you know this person who said mamta you have you know your f- you know there, there's no glow what are you doing there's no glow on your face anymore did this person know what you've gone through yes very much very much there's no glow on your face now look at your eyes they look sunken they are puffy and you know you have got dark circles so i said well you know i i had to tell this to her it's a well you know that there is a open wound inside and it i've just covered it and the pain is showing on my face and i don't know if it it will ever you know get all right but uh, yes you are right in saying that this is how i've started looking but i'm sure things will get better that's how i have to you know uh, say to her i'm sorry yeah, that you have to go through all this and uh, i how how did you cope like uh, like every time something would come how do you feel what what do you feel like doing so actually you know uh, the feeling of you know say um, helplessness was right from when sanjay fell sick and when doctors are saying that 50 50 kind of thing that that feeling you know started right from that time but it just continued and it still continues uh, i mean the feeling of helplessness, helplessness it still because continues. you know all these things that i told you i felt that you know it happened because sanjay is not there i'm facing this and secondly even if someone is trying or trying to you know imply something not in a good way people at times you know also want to just you know um, just hit you or want to you know uh, make you feel not so good so uh, it's all because you know that pillar who was you know right behind me that anchor mm-hmm. who was there who had my back all the time who would defend me at any any place Uh, is not there and i have to fight my battle i have to stand up for myself each time someone says yes. something or even if i don't respond in my mind i'm just you know standing up for myself mamta just go ahead this person is ignorant this person is naive forgive this person they don't know you have come much ahead of them from thinking perspective you are much above the pettiness of uh, you know these small talks so i think Thanks. this feeling of you know and, uh, not being around with someone was there and would you say that uh, these are the feelings that are uh, reflected or resonated with the other previous uh, as well i mean have they also gone through similar experiences like you yes definitely similar uh, insensitive comments from people i think uh, as i said that i still may have gone through lesser such comments but you know they may have gone through more because you know uh, in our group we have people of all age groups and um, i'm on the other side that uh, i'm i'm in the middle aged group i'm not so young uh, but we have much younger lot uh, and they they are also you know they have smaller kids they are not financially that well off because they are still setting up yes. themselves and all that so they are going through a lot so uh, like for example their in laws being so insensitive towards them 
So there is this lady and um, when I knew that I'm going to come and talk here, I did, you know, uh, open that forum to say that if someone wants to, you know, express something, I can do that for them. So uh, there is this lady who lived in a smaller place in MP and uh, she was constantly by her neighbors when she would go out, people would just move on the other direction. And then they would say that early in the morning, we don't want to see your face. Okay. And she has a five year old. And she said, Mamta, that's the reason, you know, uh, I'm moving to Bangalore. She's now moved to Bangalore. So, of course, a city is different. So, I haven't faced something like that. But in smaller places, people are also facing things which are so, so you know, regressive. I mean, this kind of thing. Imagine what she would be, you know, going through. So, that is there. There is a, uh, there is a friend of mine, in fact. And she is, again, you know, at a good level and everything. Very smart girl and all. And um, she comes from a very progressive family. Her husband was doing so well. And uh, in fact, she lost her husband some long time uh, back to, you know, um, some other, you know, for some other heart attack or something. Uh, she was telling me that, you know, her mother-in-law came and um, she said that, uh, uh, you know, I should be grieving more than you because I lost my son. My pain is more than yours. So, I mean, quantifying the pain. pain. And then the sister-in-law comes and she says that, you know, I knew my brother a little longer than you knew him. So my pain, pain is, is more. bigger. And uh, what about you? You can re get remarried and all that stuff and you will be fine. So, I mean, that's another thing whether you will get remarried or not. But you cannot quantify pain. this pain like this. Even I have encountered things where, you know, someone told me that, you know, Mamta, uh, why are you, uh, you know, you know, thinking like this, you, uh, Sanjay has left so much for you and you are working yourself. So, I mean, you are, you are comfortable. So, I mean, I'm comfortable, that doesn't mean that, you know, that I don't have, don't have this pain for the person uh, who's gone. Look at others, they are, you know, fending for themselves. Okay, I'm lucky that I had the, you know, um, uh, I had the, you know, uh, luxury of grieving, I would say. I had that luxury. But a lot of people didn't have that because they are fighting that everyday battle of sustaining. Okay, so that's fine. But you know, either case, you know, we are all in pain. I think here again, I would like to say something. <laughs> Listening to all this, uh, thank you for sharing, uh, Mamta, uh, your story and a few brave hearts. And whoever's listening to this. Whether you are a mother-in-law, I know I'm going to be one soon. All of us who have boys are going to be. Uh, we are sisters, we are daughters, we are mothers. I'm talking to women, especially. We have a heart, okay? And uh, death is inevitable. Please, let's not, let's not ostracize people who have lost somebody. That's very, very important. Pain is pain. Pain is an absolute feeling. Please let us not try and udar uh, be show upmanship that mine is worse so you should not be feeling this. Everybody has their pain. Please just you feel it. Let the other feel it. Let everybody feel it and let's all hold hands and feel it together. Because baggage don't take it out on somebody who's just had a loss. That is number one. This is to everybody out there, men of course. Men, my request to you, please stop hitting on women who have just gone through a law. Stop doing it. Seriously, there's lots I need to tell men, but abhi ke liye hai. That is number two. Number three, people who are living in uh, tier two, tier three cities, you have access to the internet. Please educate yourselves and be a little progressive. Please leave purane zamana ka thinking. Ye ki ye bahu hai, isne ye kiya, usne ye kiya hai. Aap, aapne abhi nahi bola, but I've heard a lot of other comments also. Teri bujay se hua hai. And you are Apshagun and all that. Stop it. Abhi usi se aage that is number three. And uh, number four. Pain is independent of wealth, privilege, luck. It is independent. Pain is pain. So if there is a pain on the side or a millionaire, pain hai, it is going to be the same. So please don't do that. Don't compare. Anything else? Sorry, I get very, very emotional. <laughs> That's just me. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know. But what would you like to, uh, is there anything else you would like to say or anything that you would like to wrap up with? It's 
what is yours whatever you want to say yes, before that sorry you did have a few things that you said that ye nahi ye bol sakte ho ye nahi ye bol sakte ho yeah, yeah yeah i will ask you and you tell me so let's say she mentioned that somebody said uh, mamta ye dark circles dikh rahe hain ye wo maybe she's again coming from a place of well be uh, of a good intent but what could be the other way of saying it if i'm your friend the other way could be i mean i'm already feeling low and don't make me feel that you have lost it completely now because you don't even look good anymore uh so probably you say that mamta you are doing wonderfully well you are so strong you have come a long way and uh, now is the time to start looking after yourself and let's do it together let's do it together to let's do it together so maybe you want to chalo chal aaj chalte hain like that thoda sa it's okay take her along that is number one vacations yeah and then you know there's you know time um, of you know there's special occasions i mean in this entire year i would also say that you know every day was a brand new day for me because i was trying to you know cope up with you know uh, doing things without sanjay and, new and new yeah new new stuff. new things and i was rediscovering myself i have also changed as a also person new. okay and uh, i would say that you know <clears throat> i mean it was it's not about you know about losing sanjay was difficult of course but what what is more difficult is to learning to live without, without him, him. Yeah. that is even more difficult so while you were you know making um, all these adjustments and all that you just want you know uh, you also go through these special days the festival time comes the special occasions it's your birthday it's your anniversary and things like that and that's when you know uh, where if you have someone in your circle who's going through this you can really support and again i'm coming from a level where you know we are all well educated and come from very you know progressive background there are so many people who don't even bother about this because they are fighting their everyday battles so yeah. i'm coming from that level because i'm this is what i can talk about myself so uh, here you know uh, for example when the vacation time comes plan a vacation with that person uh, keeping that person in mind and give her that open space one is like okay why don't you come one is that mm. and that person will say no i'm doing this i'm doing mm. that i don't mm. want to come and all but just you know the the real you know genuine way could be that okay you decide a date we are going and you tell us and we will accordingly yeah. Yeah. you know plan that's including it's yeah. inclus it's inclusive it's including it's not that you can also you, come you can have choice nahi hai matlab it's almost like chal ha chalo ek sath chal chal give us a date and i have that privilege today and i'm so lucky that a group of uh, you know friends who are my college friends and who i have not you know been in touch for last 30 years but they they surfaced when sanjay was unwell and then later also and they they have they have really pulled me out and i am going for a holiday uh, next so month with them know. because that's really nice they really you know created everything around me and they said that you have to that's very good to know and whoever they are thank you we need more people <laughs> like that and there is this another friend who is in singapore and um, uh, of course she was never a friend he, he, uh, she is sanjay's team member's wife okay and she has been so consistently you know uh, just calling me talking to me and just giving giving that you know listening ears uh, all the time without judging me that it always feels so positive just you know just to talk to her and of course i've got open invitation to go to singapore and then so many other invitations i have yeah, but um, yes so and that's how i also uh, mentioned for your son uh, we will close with this and then you can give your message the father figure yeah. we had spoken on uh, she and i had connected on fathers day when i understood her story and connected with her you know after that i cried a little bit so mm-hmm. but please tell me what did you say that day? it really it's, it was very interesting but that little suggestion which you had given yeah so you know whatever it is you know i am going through a lot of pain but i feel even worse when i see my child you know suffering and he is one guy as he would not show that to me because he is trying to protect me and i am trying to protect him by you know not trying not to show you know my feelings but it's very difficult not to show show your feelings and he you know lost his father at a time when he really needed a friend okay i may try to become 
his mother and father i may give him the best what money can buy for him or good food or anything but i cannot be his father i tried i cannot be his father okay i cannot do that you know man to man talk i don't know those things and you know he would just come back and he would say that you know sanjay was a nocturnal person he would watch tv till very late and all that and now when he comes home by 9 o'clock the lights are out and everything is closed and shut and there is a eerie silence in the house and he would say mama i miss so much you know watching tv our favorite documentaries with dad and he would tell me this he would tell me that and all that stuff so i feel that he is looking for a father figure somewhere okay and of course no one can be his father but you can always you know have that inclusive thing by making him feel that hey son we are there for you okay i'm talking here i'm talking about you know your immediate family not everybody can just come and do that right not anyone can do that so immediate family and not like those weird neighbors yeah, of course oh, wait. never we don't you know. want that my son says yeah just in I, case anybody is getting a wrong message please yeah listen yeah yeah so i mean it has to be your close yeah. people close. and trusted trusted people and if they would just give him that comfort that we have your back you go go out in the world shine and if you fall we are there to hold you yes. don't worry yes. it's not only your mother we are also there with you that would really really go a long way and you know these special days come like father's day okay i mean uh, this this has not happened with me because you know my son is grown up and we are not too much fathers day uh, type but he did come and tell me uh, he saw this uh, okay uh, salman khan with his father on fathers day there was something and he says mama even he has a father and salman khan himself is my father's age so even he has a father so i felt so bad that i felt that somewhere he he has a longing that someone should you know give him that kind of you know space and love so uh like you know this fathers day passed and i would say those who have you know much younger kids and all and if you know someone like this if you want to support that person especially on that day rather than sending happy fathers day and everybody seeing and those who don't have fathers they just feel that oh my god why did i even read this message just plan a day and you say you say that okay my son you we all are going out together do something yeah. like that or just you know um forget fathers day for grown up children like mine you could just call him any time and just yeah. say that how are you doing and just don't worry just go out and we are there for you and it takes nothing it, it takes absolutely nothing, nothing. nothing. it takes absolutely nothing, nothing. but it will mean so much so much because he yeah. would feel that yes i am protected yes. and you know there are people apart from my mother because he sees me as a very strong person but he is also seeing me as a person who is weak at the moment i am very fragile naturally you know that naturally yeah all right we we'll close now with the we i will remind you what you had said in the beginning if there's anything else you want to add and we will wrap up the session at the beginning your message to the world was please don't judge when uh, somebody is going through grieving period in general don't judge but especially then you had said be grateful for what you have because you don't know what might happen and focus on the now those are the three things you said do you want to add on to anything after which we will take a couple of audience questions what is your message to the world now yeah so one thing probably you know i should have said before is you know we generally try to put a you know timeline to grief okay people come and say that hey 6 months have passed now you should be doing yeah. these things hey now 8 months have passed now you should be you know going out and doing these these x y z things so there is no timeline to grief okay yeah. there is no yeah. timeline so give that person the time to feel what she is feeling and let her just you know embrace all that she is feeling because after that she will emerge uh, out as a strong person if she tries to you know just you know keep everything uh, to herself and not be able to you know express herself her grief then that will you know keep coming every now and then so that is one thing and uh, the message that i would want to you know um, i would like you know what i would want to share at the end is and sanjay always used to say this that life is short enjoy the ride so i would say uh, we must not waste a day because death tells us um it makes us realize that um, uh, how short life is so please 
be you know nice to your you know loved ones make time for them today not later do you know make them feel feel worthy say nice things to them today and don't wait for the funeral day when you will have a list of nice things to say so don't 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 do that so and i would also say that you know little be whatever but always be kind because little bit of you know kindness goes a long way to nurture your own soul and heart so that's the message Thank i would like so to much. get thank you thank you so much